Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today we are on uh, part of the reef course for the Murray Coast 50 miler. I have Gary with me. Hello. I have Paul and then Keith. <laughs> so yeah, we're basically we're just going to go for the second part of the, the course. We've got about 42k um, from Lossy Mouth West Beach is where we started and then we're just heading along to the finish line in Cullen. So yeah, we'll just uh, take you all uh, along the, the route today and we'll see how we go. See if we can get some footage for you guys so you know where you're going on race day. Right, catch us in a bit. section in the trees for about three miles then we have a left turn on the Lossy Road so you cross over the traffic lights around the corner and then it's left of the farm track road nice and easy and here's Mr Paul over here and then here's Gary and Keith coming along so far the route's been pretty good uh, we're just on a four mile section of loose rock and sand so yeah it's nice because this must be around about the 45 to 50k mark nothing like testing the legs sounds good though How are we getting on guys? Not bad, thanks. not bad. Not enjoying it, so I thought I was like, I'll go up and have a wee look because I was like, am I even yeah. going to get to see the sea? <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, that's uh, the beach section finished along Lossy Mouth. We're still on the beach, but we're just off of the loose pebbles. Um, oh, you want to be running along the beach on the loose stuff next to this old wall. I don't know what it'd be called. Um, but yeah, so you run along that beach for four and a half k, three miles, something like that. And then you turn off in the watch hut. And then, yeah, so we're then onto the upper section, which gives you a little bit of a better view as I turn into a tree. <laughs> yeah, so you got a nice view. I don't know what hill that is in front. Um, not sure. Must be towards Ben Rennes, maybe. Not Ben Rennes, uh, the one beside Spay Bay that you do on the space side, must be out there. But yeah, so tip number one for the route so far is save the legs along the 5k stretch along the Lost of Mouth Beaches, it's all loose pebbles. Um, pretty sure Gary would maybe concur with that. Yeah, definitely, yeah, just uh, watch the ankles for sure. There's a uh, it's quite a long stretch of pebbles, so yeah, just be careful along that stretch, take your time and uh, yeah, save the legs for when you're on the, the harder stuff. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, tip number one. See if we can bring a few more as we go through the run. Um, we'll maybe check in with everyone as we go around and see what their thoughts are on the route. But so far we've got a cracking day and uh, yeah, I think that's like 12, 13k in. Yeah, catch it up in a little bit. Peace.
as well as just oh there we go so that's just coming up to roughly about 20k 21k um so we just arrived at Spade Bay for anyone who's done the Speyside Ultra um you'll, you'll know you're familiar there's a, a a wee water station as you come up to the top of this road here um, but there's a slight difference uh, alteration in the route instead of following round uh, going straight to Spade Bay you follow around to the left hand side and loop round the back of the Dolphin Visiting Centre and then you come back up onto the road turn off on the road and then you're back on this road for another I think it's about a kilometre and then you've got a left turn and you head out towards Bucky so yeah we'll check in again just at the turn off yeah see you then So we are following the coast of Israel. Just uh, left Port Gordon. There's not really much going on there. Uh, again, this view along the way, but we're now, I think, two miles from Bucky. Just running along the main road section. Uh, yeah, it's pretty flat. Nice view out to the side here. Gives you a little bit of time to look around and make sure you're fueling and make sure you're drinking. But yeah, I would say. Tip number two for that I would uh, maybe invest in a baseball cap or a pair of sunglasses because if it's sunny, no point squinting your eyes running into the sun for the whole thing. Um, something nice and easy just think about on race day if the sun's going to be out. But yeah, right, catch up when we get into Bucky. Almost there, nice and easy. Yeah, 16k, 10 miles to go. <laughs> We're just laughing at that fellow. Hello, back again. That's uh, 20 miles into our route. Uh, I think it's about 70k, 71k on the course route. I think we've got about 10k left. Um, just heading along. Where are we heading along, anyone? Strathling Golf Course. Strathling Golf Course. Oh, right, here we go. Look. Yeah, this is it. So you run past this. Nice and scenic. Don't know if you'll be able to see my camera, but. The uh, wick is over here somewhere in the in the mist. That cracking day. Just make up your eyes on Morven. All right. Oh, it's okay. We've got Morven over here somewhere. <laughs> We've got Keith, the tour guide. Yeah, this is a local local uh, spot for him. But yeah, so I just thought I'd uh, put the guys I'm running with on the spot with a quick fire question to see one thing, uh, uh, one piece of kit they would they would take on their long runs that they'd probably recommend for either an ultra distance or like a trail marathon so we'll start off with Gary what's the yeah. one bit of kit you would take with you? kit wise um, oh you're over here I would well I would, if we're talking clothing or anything like that just make sure that you, you've definitely got like your uh, waterproofs or anything like that so make sure you plan for all all conditions especially when you're deep into a race and uh, it starts to rain or gets windy it just means you can throw on like a, a 
a windbreaker or anything like that um, to keep yourself warm. So yeah, definitely come prepared for for the conditions. All weather. Yeah. Right, so Gary is all weather. Paul is behind me somewhere. What would you check take with your Paul? Yeah, for the the few one. Definitely a lot of training runs to sort that out. That's from been one of my biggest things to nail was my fueling. So I seem to have nailed it now, so that's my biggest biggest thing like. What kind of fuel would you use on a long run then Paul? Uh, my gels and one to dried fruit. Nice. I've uh, sampled quite a few things but that seems to be working for me. Excellent. Just kind of coke as well. Yeah. <laughs> so number two, working on your fueling. And the Bulldog t-shirt, you can't do that Danny. <laughs> Um, and then lastly, Keith, what would you take on a long run? Mister, I've just dropped my running pack because it's too heavy. Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> you got it guys, a one word answer from Keith there. He's just coming into the midst of his longest run yet. And uh, this man likes his Vaseline. So, you know, anyone looking out for him, you'll know he's all slippery and he's ready. <laughs> and for myself, <laughs> for myself, would probably be um, I would say shoes and um, make sure you kind of know what the terrain is going to be like um, so like for instance this route so far if the weather is going to be dry you'll get off with the road shoes no bother I definitely on this 40 40 odd k section um, if it's wet you, to be honest you could probably still get off with road shoes um, I'm running a pair of speed goat fours and um, got a good bit of grip in that but yeah definitely check out what terrain you're going to be running on and go from there so yeah there you go four tips <laughs> make sure you get them in your pack or make sure you got them ready for your long runs or any races you've got coming up uh, i'll probably do another feature video of the five main things that i put into my running pack um, and what sort of fuel and stuff i use and uh, it looks like we're on the, the wrong route here but i think we're all good so yeah catch you in a bit So, the bad news, we would say if you're 74k in the race, you have a nice lovely hill to go up. On the plus side, it's Keithy Boy's longest run. He's finally over the 34k mark. Woo! Oh yes, that's it, we're getting it. Keith's looking, looking awful stellar, he looks happy. Even ah, that's right, he doesn't need anything, doesn't need fuel. This man's running it bare chested next time. <laughs> Uh, we can't argue with the weather today, but yeah, nice little hill climb up here and still going up, up and up. But to be fair, I think this is possibly the one and only hill climb, if it, you can call it a hill climb, in the whole race. So make sure you crank it out until 74k. And then, yeah, once you get to the top of here, I think it's downhill past the Bow Fiddick and then along to Cullen. And yeah, we're done. Easy. Right, catch you in the next bit.
Oh, everybody getting their phones out. <laughs> this is, what is it called? Bow? Fiddle. Bow Fiddle. This thing here. Oh, yeah. A nice little hole in our rock. Uh -huh. Good. <laughs> And we are done. Nice. I'm assuming around here is the finish. Yeah. Uh, well done, Keith, getting your first marathon under the belt. Yeah. Hey guys, so that's a wrap. Um, that's me just back in Lossiemouth, for where I believe one of the checkpoints is. Um, but yeah, overall, route was good fun. Um, we had cracking weather for it, slight wind, but nothing too bad. Hopefully, it's like that on race day. Um, I'm probably going to go for the road shoe because uh, there's quite a lot of road sections so it seems quite fast but yeah overall pretty pretty excited so roll on June and we'll get the Murray 50 underway um, if you haven't already please subscribe like and share and I'll catch you in the next video peace